Hello everybody and welcome, this is Spoonie with another shipbuilding tutorial for Starbase. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an auto approach. So all you have to do to approach an asteroid is point a laser at it. We're going to do this with four lines of Yolal and a single rangefinder. So the first thing we're going to need is a rangefinder. In our asset browser, we can just search for rangefinder. And then we'll need a hard point. These will work with any hard point. All you do is attach it, bolt it on, and then place this on your ship, preferably in the center of the front so that you can easily line up your rangefinder with the asteroid you're hoping to approach. I've installed mine right on the front of my ship in the center. Next, we're going to select our rangefinder, and where it says rangefinder on state, we're going to change this field to just say AP which will stand for auto approach. On the second field, we're going to change this value from a 5 to 1000. This determines the length of the beam for your rangefinder. The maximum is 1000. On this third name field, we're going to change this, the rangefinder distance, to APD, or approach distance. This is the field that will show how far the laser is currently being projected. If it's uninterrupted, it will show 1000. If it's hitting something, it will show less than 1000. We're also going to need a button, and I would suggest using a progress bar. So for the button, we're going to change the button state name value field to just AP. Make sure that your button style is set from a 0 to a 1 if you're using a hybrid button. We want to be able to just press it and turn it on, and press it again to turn it off. If this is set to a 0, you'll have to hold it down. You can also use a warning light button or a simple button for this AP. You don't necessarily have to use a hybrid button. For the progress bar, we're going to change the name value from panel value to APD. And this will display the distance that the laser for our rangefinder is currently at. This is really helpful because it's going to let you know when you've actually centered on the asteroid when it's far away. If it's set to 1000, it either means that the asteroid is too far away to use this, or that you haven't actually targeted the asteroid. Before we get into YOLAL, we'll also need to change the centering speed of our forward thrust lever. So select your forward thrust lever, go down to where it says lever centering speed, and we're just going to change this name value to FC. And now that everything is set up and our values are named, let's get started on the YOLAL. You'll need a chip socket and any YOLAL chip for this. And first, we're going to set up some temporary values. So if any of this seems confusing, or you would just like a better idea of how YOLAL works, I'll place a link to a YOLAL tutorial in the top right. So the first temporary value that we'll set up will be X, and X will represent our minimum distance. This is the minimum distance that we'd like to achieve. We don't want to be any closer than this value. So I'm going to set this equal to 10, because I don't want my ship to come any closer than 10 meters from the asteroid. The next value will be y. y will equal 100 divided by x. And this is just a modifier to set up our speed later on. The third value that we're going to use is z. And z is going to represent our maximum distance. This is the furthest away from the asteroid that we'd like to be. And I'm going to set z equal to 15. So this should keep me between 10 and 15 meters away from the asteroid. If you'd like to adjust this at all, X and Z are the only two values here that you'll ever need to change. So next we're going to move on to an if statement. And this if statement is also going to be on the first line of YOLAL. And it will be if colon AP, so the value of AP, is equal to 1, and don't forget to use two equal signs, then colon FC, which is what we set our centering speed on our forward thrust to, equals 0. 
go to two. Else, colon FC equals nine, go to one, end. So what this if statement will do is tell you all that if we've turned on the auto approach, we want the centering speed of our forward thrust to be set to zero and then to move on to the second line. If we haven't activated our auto approach, then the forward thrust centering speed should be equal to nine and it should stay on the first line. Don't forget the word end at the end of all of your if statements, otherwise they will not function and this entire line would be skipped. Now we can move on to the second line of YOLO and on this line, we're gonna use another if statement that's if colon APD, so the value of APD. If it's greater than 1000, then T is equal to open parentheses colon APD divided by Z close parentheses minus one. And remember that T has no colon. Else T equals zero end. What this line will do is tell YOLAL that whenever the distance is at 1000 meters, we're not pointed at anything, so it shouldn't turn up the thrusters. Without this line, every time the laser moved off of an asteroid, it would set the thrusters to full throttle. We're going to put one more if statement on the second line, and that's if T is greater than 20, then T equals 20 end and what this will do is make sure that we never really move above 20 percent thrust so without this if we were to point the auto approach at something that was 800 or 900 meters away from us it's potentially possible that we would be moving too quickly to slow down to stop within this 10 to 15 meter range and if we're outside of the safe zone that could mean we'd get hit with an asteroid and potentially damage our ship on the third line we're going to type colon FCU forward and we're going to set this equal to T. Next we'll use another if statement that if colon AP equals zero and remember to use two equal signs whenever you're using an if statement because it needs to check if it's true or false. So if it's true that the value of AP is zero, then go to one, end. And what this will do is tell YOLAL that if we turn off our auto approach to just go back to the first line, and it will hold there until we turn it back on again. So because YOLAL is not reading this first line of code unless you turn off your auto approach, if you decide to change the X or Z value, you'll need to turn off your auto approach and turn it back on again before these changes take effect. And next we'll place another if statement on the third line. This one that says if the value, so colon, of APD is greater than X, then go to two, end. And this tells YOLAL that if the value of APD is above our minimum distance, then just go to the second line. We won't need to move on to the fourth unless we drop below this value. And on the fourth line of YOLAL, we're going to type if the value of APD is less than X, then the value of FCU backward, so colon FCU backward, should equal Y multiplied by, and you have to use this star, open parentheses, X minus the value of APD, close parentheses, end, go to two. So what this if statement will do is tell YOLAL that if the value of APD or our distance is currently less than whatever our minimum distance is, then it needs to turn on our backward thrusters. And this will scale based on how close we are to the asteroid. So if we're at 10, it should only be thrusting at 10%. 
If we're at 1, it should be thrusting closer to 100%. You may need to adjust this depending on how powerful your backward thrusters are, but this should be a good baseline. And that's the entire script. We're ready to go and test this. And I'll pin this code in the comments for anybody who would rather just copy and paste. Remember though, you will still need to change the names on your rangefinder as well as the centering speed for your forward thrust. So now let's see how this works now that it's installed on a ship. When we turn on AP, we can see that our script begins to run. So now let's find an asteroid. We'll point the laser towards it. This one's fairly far away. And as you can see, the APD on the bar in the bottom left does decrease once I've targeted the asteroid. Now that it's targeted, we're starting to move towards it. So I won't touch the controls from here on out. When you're out mining, most asteroids won't take very long to approach. This one was particularly far away, but we wanted to test that we won't be moving too fast in case we do decide to move towards an asteroid that is far away. And while you may be tempted to increase the speed that your throttle is limited to, I would recommend against it unless you've tested it in the safe zone and you know that when your ship is full and heavy, you'll still be able to come to a complete stop before you hit the asteroid. And I'll speed the rest of this up a bit, but again, I would suggest on your first time out testing this on an asteroid that is particularly far away, just to be safe. And as you can see, we've come to a stop around 12 meters away from the asteroid, which is what we expected. Even though this ship is half filled with ore, it was still able to come to a complete stop because we didn't push it over 20% throttle. <laughs> 